I will talk about road safety and avenues. So let's start. Why talk about road safety? Because as a lover of tree-lined roads and as a road user, one is inevitably concerned with road safety. The fundamental question is, is it possible to keep or to plant trees and at the same time provide for road safety? We know that running off the road and hitting a tree as a rule has dramatic consequences. And everywhere in Europe, worldwide, the answer to this issue is the same, applying the concept of forgiving roadsides. Can you change the slides, please? Uh, next slide. Uh, okay. This concept assumes that driving errors cannot be ruled out and that we should not suffer and duly serious or more serious consequences as a result of that. The concept of uh, forgiving roadsides implies that the verges should be free of obstacles, and if there are obstacles in the so-called safety zone, they should be shielded by safety barriers. Next slide, please. Next slide, too. This sounds reasonable. It appears to be a balanced approach to road safety. But let us look closer now at this concept and investigate whether it is compatible with the preservation of avenues. Next slide. To achieve Roadside areas that are free of obstacles, there are three possibilities. Next slide. Selling the existing trees, planting trees further away from the edge of the carriageway, beyond the so-called safety zone, or erecting safety barriers in front of the trees. Next slide. Selling the existing trees, this is clearly incompatible with the preservation of avenues. But what about now the second possibility, planting further away from the edge of the carriageway, planting outside of the safety zone? In France, the recommended width of a safety zone is four to seven meters on roads with a permitted maximum speed of 90 kilometers per hour. And in this case, the reference line is the inner limit of the edge line. Only rarely do the French road authorities own sufficient land to account for the minimum distance of four meters, let alone for even greater distances, of course. Those purchasing additional land, an investment of millions of euros, and annual maintenance are costly. Added to that, adjacent landowners would have to be ready to sell a piece of land. These difficulties are not merely ideas. They are proven reality observed in several French counties. And in Germany too, German road officers have raised this issue and asked me uh, how their colleagues in other countries managed to plant at greater distances from the carriageway. And the response comes from one French road officer, and it is, please next slide. Next slide. Okay. Purchasing the necessary land is impossible. Next slide, please. Here is a concrete example from Sweden. We can see how the renewal of the avenue had to adapt to specific site conditions with a forest on one side, a stone wall, and an embankment on the other side. 
In addition, I would like to stress that avenues are cultural heritage and landscape assets, so that the distances between the three rows may not be selected arbitrarily. Now, what about the third option, designing a for forgiving road environment? Safety barriers. Do safety barriers offer a remedy? Installing safety barriers may seem to be a promising approach, but it has its own limits. An economic limit, safety barriers are costly too, and technical limits. The first technical limit is the required minimum length of safety barriers. In this long avenue, 33 km kilometers long, situated in the south of France, no safety barriers could be installed because the access roads are too close to each other. This is an avenue which comprises 3,000 plane trees with an average average daily traffic of 8,400 vehicles. The second technical limit emerges when the trees stand too close to the carriageway. Next slide, please. The space needed to install the barriers is simply not available. Here in this example, we have a 1.4 kilometer long avenue comprising 257 Lane trees uh, close to the famous uh, uh, castle of Bourg du Comte near Paris. The average daily traffic is 4,500 vehicles and the territory is 5.2. Next slide. Even when the special conditions are not as critical as shown here, safety barriers need sufficient working with to fulfill their function so that the installation of safety barriers is generally impossible when trees are closer than 1.1 meter to the edge of the carriageway. Next slide. Both avenues I showed you here belong to the very few protected avenues in France. Have they not been protected? The concept of forgiving roadsides would have led to their felling. A felling without any possibility to replant them. Next slide, please. Next slide. This is the reality. The concept of forgiving roadsides and the corresponding guidelines do not keep the promises to provide for the preservation of our common cultural, natural and landscape asset, the avenues. Next slide. Do they keep the promises regarding road safety? Is a safety zone of four meters, seven meters, eight meters, or perhaps 12 meters sufficient to avoid serious outcomes of run of the road accidents. Can we speak of a safety zone when there are fatal accidents that occur with a car hitting a tree far away from a carriageway on private ground? And what about safety barriers and road safety? In fact, safety barriers themselves are roadside obstacles. Of course, they are less aggressive than uh, single obstacles. However, they too cause traffic death every year. In France, in 2010, there were 154 fatalities and more than 1,000 people injured seriously in crashes against safety barriers. So, what next? The three options for meeting neutral requirements of a forgiving world environment, that is selling, establishing uh, an obstacle-free zone, or installing safety barriers, are not compatible with the preservation of avenues, and they have limited or imagined effects on road safety. 
Again, we are facing the fundamental question, roadside fees and road safety, do they fit together? Yeah, and what if trees were not the real problem? Where there are no trees, there are no collisions with trees, no victims of collisions with trees, that's true. But does the number of road casualties go down when there are no avenues? This is the relevant question. Since the actual aim of road safety is to reduce the number of road casualties, not only to reduce the number of victims of collisions with trees, but reduce the number of all victims of road accidents. To reduce the number of road accident victims, both yes and no. Because what would a drop from 4,000 fatalities to 3,000 fatalities represent if at the same time the number of road users would decline by an even greater number? It would mean an increased risk of being killed in road traffic. The actual aim of road safety is in fact to decrease the risk of being killed in road traffic, that is the number of fatalities for a given exposure. So, in order to investigate whether the risk in our roads decreases or not when there are no avenues, I compared data from French counties. I examined road safety in relation to the abundance of avenue trees in these counties. The results were published in the French professional journal RGRA in 2011. Is unable to provide for both the preservation of avenues and road safety. And we have seen that the level of safety is not correlated with the abundance of avenue trees in a specific region, even when the trees are standing in the safety zone and are not shielded by safety barriers. On the contrary, trees and avenues have a positive influence on road safety, calming the traffic and fostering cautious driving behaviour. Next slide. There comes a clear conclusion. As far as avenues are concerned, self-explaining road and traffic calming instead of forgiving roadsides. This is exactly what the French chief of auditors from the highest supervisory authorities of the French Road Administration and the Police Administration suggested in 2017. According to this team that audited the road safety policies in French counties, the planning of avenues should be abandoned. A comprehensive policy should be pursued instead that is oriented towards the traffic calming concept and the preservation of natural assets. So I could well end my presentation here. You have the data, you have the facts, but I would like to leave you with a few more points to, for further reflection. Point one, in the overview of fatal collisions with trees outside urban areas in the state of Brandenburg in Germany from 2008 to 2010, showed that the least accidents occurred in continuous avenues, avenues with no gaps, whereas more than a quarter of collisions with trees happened in avenues with important gaps. Thus, this not speak for a systematic gap planting of avenues, just as we see it here done in Germany. Point two. There are more than 10 various types of roadside obstacles that do not face any major indignation. Please, next. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. 
even though they do increase the severity too. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Point three. <clears throat> Driving errors may lead to impacts against roadside objects, but also to frontal impacts. Next. Forgiving errors on the road. Next slide, please. Number four. Does this jogger rank among roadside obstacles? Number five, the accepted risk associated with hazardous substances are 100 times higher for workers than for the public. A risk of death of one in 10,000 per year compared to one in a million. Why shouldn't we adopt such a differentiated approach when we compare tree avenues with roads without trees? If it is possible in the economy, should it not be applied for cultural, natural and landscape assets? Regulations with respect to giving roadside safety distances, safety barriers, should apply to technical objects like posts, but not cultural, natural, and landscape. Point six. No, uh, not yet, really, sorry, okay. Point six, modes of transport have a direct influence on risk. The fatality risk for car passengers is 10 times higher than for bus passengers and four to 10 times higher than for train passengers. Next slide. There is an additional risk for sick cyclists. They have a 10 times higher fatality risk than car passengers for the same number of kilometers traveled. We prefer driving by car than taking the train because it's more practical or because it's cheaper. The risk is increased by a factor of 10. We prefer riding a bike than riding a car because it's more environmentally friendly. The risk is once again increased by another factor of 10. Next slide. Next. Next. Does safety take an absolute value, preference value in our lives as individuals? No, not even when our children or grandchildren are concerned, because otherwise we would always take the train or take the bus when we travel with them. But who is doing that systematically? And we are not willful murderers in spite of that. We simply attach importance to other issues, not only to safety. Should this not be also true for society? So that is the end of my presentation and then I thank you very much. Dobrý den, zeptám se zdalí a za jakých podmínek je ve Francii ukládána za odstraněné stromy náhradní výsadba. Děkuji. Náhradní, výs náhradní výsadba. Unfortunately, in France was the, the land where there were the most avenues in Europe, but we have the least protective uh, legislation. So there is no rule imposing any um, compensatory measures. Já bych 
chtěl poprosit, jestli by přednášející byla ochotna okomentovat to, do jaké míry ty principy, o kterých mluví, se v praxi uplatňují opravdu, ať už v její zemi nebo v jiných evropských zemích, kde má zkušenost, do jaké míry je akceptují úřady a legislativci. What do you mean by uh, principles? Which principles? Myslím, že to je upřesnit, já ještě předám mikrofon. Myslím tím ten, ten závěr, který já jsem z té přednášky vycítil jako hlavní, že bezpečné silnice nedosáhneme tím, že stromy budeme odstraňovat, ale naopak, že nám ty aleje a stromy pomáhají k sklidnění, chování a tak dále. Okay, this is uh, this is the problem. Um, many people uh, agree with this, and as I told you, um, an auditor team just came to the same conclusions. But the road authorities who manage the roads, they are not so keen on keeping the trees because they do not know how to manage the trees, and they are not interested in keeping the trees. That's the problem. Uh, unfortunately, it's not accepted everywhere. Tak to byla otázka na tělo, a proto tady taky trochu jsme, že se tyto principy příliš zatím neuplatňují. Uh, má ještě někdo nějaký další dotaz? Hello, Chantal. Here you speak. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, just wanted to add uh, to add something. Uh, two uh, stories from real life. Uh, one uh, uh, couple of years ago, uh, uh, a, a famous sportswoman had an accident in which uh, she was driving and her brother was killed when she hit a tree. Uh, this was a roadside tree, uh, sort of, growing, growing 11 meters from the road. Uh, can you imagine uh, what was the speed of the car that, uh, that, uh, that hit, the, hit, hit uh, this uh, distant tree w uh, and killed uh, a pas the passenger? Uh, and I use this uh, uh, example to demonstrate that there is no uh, safe distance for reckless drivers. Uh, besides, there are many other uh, obstacles. There are, there are uh, signposts, there are uh, uh, lamps, uh, there are telephone poles. Uh, plenty of infrastructure against which uh, a reckless driver can be hurt. And the second observation. Mm, uh, I heard uh, 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 local police uh, chief from the city of Poznań give such an, a, an example. Uh, there was a, a road where trees were removed. Uh, and after the removal of trees, uh, accidents began to happen at this road. 
Now, what was the reason? Drivers began to drive faster, and there was, and the geometry, shape of the road was not uh, adapted for this higher speed. Uh, before the removal of trees, there were no accidents in this section, uh, which illustrates uh, nicely uh, your point that the the, the point is. The point is not to remove uh, everything from the road, but the, the point is to, uh, to improve uh, driving. Make, it, make dri driving safer and adapt it to the uh, local conditions at the given uh, road. Thank you. Thank you. Děkujeme, tak to byl asi důležitý komentář. Samozřejmě tyhle situace jsou vážné a my se jim snažíme také věnovat, protože ta bezpečnost provozu samozřejmě je jako velice důležité téma. Máte ještě otázku do vámi? Já bych měl ještě poznámku k situaci v naší zemi, kde se přijímá teďka jako obecně obecné pravidlo, že stromy by měly být pěstovány až za příkopem, což není jenom z hlediska bezpečnosti silničního provozu, ale i z hlediska perspektivy těch stromů. Stromy, které rostou blíž, mají často jenom poloviční kořenový systém. A jestli jsou i nějaké studie, které se týkají tohoto hlediska pěstování stromů blízko silnic. probably because of all the reasons, salt and, and so on. Uh, but the problem is, do we have enough land to, to plant? And uh, can we keep the vault above the road, keep the distances between the two lines of trees sufficient close, sufficiently close to have a vault afterwards when the trees grow older? But of course, The root system might be better when you are further away from the road, but there is the other problem with the landowners and the uh, the landowners which are then cutting the roots when they are plowing their fields. This is also a problem. Pardon, jsme se tady <laughs> nějak zamluvili. Máte tady ještě nějakou další otázku, nebo můžeme se se Šanta rozloučit? Já ještě jeden teda poslední dotaz. Já, já bych se chtěl zeptat, přednášící říkala, že podelná vzdálenost stromů podél komunikace, tak je lepší, když je, tak je lepší, když je to, když ty stromy jsou blíž k sobě podélně, než když jsou dál, vzdálený, víc jako vzdálený. Jestli by mohla říct, jako, jakou doporučuje vzdálenost prostě mezi těma stromama podélné vzdálenosti. Děkuji. In the line, you mean, or between lines? In the line, yeah. In the line. In the line. In the line, um, 
I think it's interesting to to keep a distance close enough to have this impression of a continuous um, row of, of trees, uh, of trunks. Um, traditionally, the distances were as close as six to ten meters. Six meters is not not much. Uh, too little to to have trees grow proper, properly uh, in fact. 10 to 12 meters was quite usual and is still usual in Germany. I think as far as I know, when they do plantings nowadays, they choose a distance of 12 meters between the trees. In France, uh, I know some avenues with uh, 15 meters between the trees, which are still nice avenues, but um, Bigger distances make it more a succession of individual trees than a, a formal avenue being a, a, an object in itself. Tak děkujeme za dotazy. Se Chantal se asi už rozloučíme. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.